<laughs> Hello, it's a Friday night, right here in my universe. Your past, my present. It's a Friday night and it's raining and I have nowhere to go. Although I have a new jacket that I like very much. However, it is July and it is far too warm to wear a jacket. So at some point I, 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 might, I might get a bit naked. Not, not that that's a plea for you to stay and listen to my intolerable Friday night wafflings. But uh, anyway, I had nothing better to do than waffle at you. And uh, the video I was trying to make, a thoughtful, sober, coherent video, mm, didn't go very well, so bugger that. I thought I'm going to get stoned and then I got more stone than I expected, so th this is going to be somewhat waffly, tangential, and and full of bollockiness. So uh, <laughs> you might want to go and get a snack. I recommend getting a very nice snack, a big one. Uh, go on, I'll still be here. Um, yes, I wanted to talk about a subject that um that I've wanted to talk about for a while now, and that is grey sexuality and the fact that a few months ago I discovered that there's a word, a thing, for what I am, or what I've been trying to describe to people and explain to people for more than half of my life. Um, because there are two questions, there are two questions that people always ask um, sexuality-wise. Number one is, uh, why are you always single? Sorry, I've just, I've just washed my hair, you know, and it feels so nice now, I can't decide what to do with it, where to put it, you know. Ah, uh, it's all very difficult. Um, yes, <laughs> the two questions. <laughs> Question number one: Why are you always single? Why? Why are you always single? You're not. You, you know. You're not. You're not that intolerable to look at. I mean, you're you're quite mad, but but you're not that mad. I'm sure there's someone out there who would tolerate you. You know, and usually this this question is asked by someone who would tolerate you, and they're they're trying to work out. You know, are you straight? Are you gay? Do you have a micro penis? Uh, do do you have do, massive raging issues? Why are you always single? Uh, so that's question number one. Um, and I used to say I'm very picky. I'm just very picky. Um, and then when asexuality became a thing, I would say, well, I'm kind of asexual. Uh, didn't really do the job either. The second question. <laughs> the second question um, is sexual fantasies because you know how it is if you're out there and you're a bit asexual too you know how it is the the, the sexual fantasy conversation you, you you've been in a relationship for like a little while a little while and then along comes the sexual fantasy question um about you know what is what's your thing what's your thing you know because 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 I've, you know, mostly dated guys, and guys always have the thing that, you know, if there's a hole where no one's been, they want to be the one to get in there and plant their flag, and, uh, and you know, they, they want to be, they want to be the best, they, they want to be the best, therefore, if you have a thing, they, they want this thing to happen. Um, and that would always be quite difficult, because I, I don't, I don't really have a thing, I, I don't really have... A sexual fantasy, or I, I, I sort of, I sort of discovered one actually, recently. But it's it's quite hard to explain because it doesn't involve sexual intercourse. It involves me being a dude, because I identify as dude, and one of my biggest roadblocks there is is I cannot find anything sexy if. If the the protagonist in my story is is female, if I'm trying to feel feelings from a female perspective, there is nothing sexy about that to me at all. So in all imaginings, I have to be a dude. So uh, <laughs> so that's that's not really like a thing I can serve up. But anyway, I was like say I only worked that out, you know, literally a few weeks ago. I was like, wow, there's there's a thought that's kind of sexy. I'm I'm already getting bored of it actually. So maybe it's not really a thing, but just a just a a brief thought. But anyway, you know. When I was really young, and I'd say, "Well, I don't, I don't really have a sexual fantasy." You know, it was always just like, "Oh, poor baby, ah, oh, you're, you're so new to it. You haven't discovered your kink yet." You know, because you're on the goth scene, and everyone has to have some kind of kink. And if you don't have a kink, well, oh, I'm a vanilla goth. Oh. So, um, <laughs> so that was how it used to be. Um, now I'm older. If I say I don't have a sexual fantasy, well. It's the exact opposite. People assume that I am 
fucking filthy. You know, that because everyone has to have a thing, right? You know, by this age, everyone has to have a sexual fantasy. Um, like, they, they, they know you have sex, you've, you've just fucked them, so you, you have sex. Therefore, you must have a sexual fantasy. And if you're not willing to tell them it, ooh, it must be filthy. You, you must be into rolling around in your own shit or something, you know? Um, so <laughs> so these, these are the questions, you know. Why are you always single? Why why do you not have sexual fantasies? Um, and yeah, like say I used to say, you know, regarding why are you always single, I always used to say I'm just very picky. And I used to say I think I'm only attracted to like one percent of the population. Um, but then I was at a club one night and I, I'd been talking about this with a friend and he said, well, there's probably at least 200 people here now. So do you fancy two of them? And I was like, fuck no. Um, and I was like, no, no, I, I can come here every week. Um, and I can, I can see nobody I find attractive for years. And when I say I see nobody I find attractive for years, I'm not just talking in this club. I'm talking anywhere I go in life and I'm also talking in movies and TV shows you know all these these actors that people consider you know the most attractive people on the planet you know picked for their good looks their charisma even most of them I don't find attractive um and um you know my friend was like well it's clearly not, you know, 1% of the population then. It's, it's more like, like, 0.000, 000, 000, 000, 000 something of, of the population. And uh, that was quite a, quite a depressing realisation. You, you begin to realise this is a bit more than just picky. Um, and then, yes, you know, asexuality became a thing. And I would say, well, I'm kind of asexual. But to be honest, I don't think people hear that right. I think people hear that and what they think they're hearing is just you trying to politely let them down by saying oh I, I basically I basically don't have sex that's why I don't fancy you but they know you have sex because they know you have like exes and all the rest of it so uh, so a bit asexual never never really went down well um and I am not comfortable with calling myself asexual I know it like oh sorry this is going to be a bit of a rant but um there are a lot of people out there these days who call themselves Ace, a proud ace. I don't really get what there is to be. I mean, you know, I'm not saying you should be ashamed of being an ace, but I don't get why it's like something you'd splatter as like proud ace. I, oh, I'm super proud of the fact that I, I don't, I don't have sex. You know, it's 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 not it's not something that you you really need to be like you know fight for your right to to not sex. You not sex, not sex people. But you know, gay rights and all of this. They they had to fight to be able to do this without being killed. Whereas I don't think anyone in most Western countries is is really going to come at you and, and do anything awful because you don't want to have sex. Maybe your parents, but you know. Um, but anyway, a lot of people talk about being, being asexual these days, and yet. I have never met any of these people who don't seem to have sex and honestly more sex than I have and in many cases more sex than the average person I know has and yet they call themselves asexual it's like look okay you you, you can have all your reasons for this but grey sexuality I think is a label that needs to be used more asexual literally the dictionary definition of asexual is not having sex, having nothing to do with sex. I think you can be asexual and masturbate, because that's not sex. They, you know, that's that's not any kind of procreation or outside thing. That's just you fiddling with bits of your own body, and I think you can do that. But um, I think if, if you're having sex, you know, on even every few years, if it's something that's ongoing in your life, I don't think asexual is the right label, uh, which obviously is the case for most people because the, the desire to procreate is like the most hardwired instinct any animal has in it. So finding people who have literally no sexual interest ever at all, those people are going to be rare. So actual asexuals are going to be rare, but I do think we should leave them their label because telling people um, I'm asexual should mean conversation over I'm asexual whereas all these people who were like oh I'm asexual but actually you know I'm, I'm obsessed with BDSM and I seem to be obsessed with sex and rude pictures and, and actually have quite a bit of sex um that just means that the next person who says I'm asexual end of conversation gets yeah but I know a lot of asexuals and they fuck like rabbits so I think asexual should be left to the actually asexual people 
So I didn't want to take that label. I didn't feel it fitted. Even you know, even though, like, say, I can go years without seeing a single human being I find remotely desirable. Uh, I don't. I still don't feel asexual is the right label for me. But grey asexual. It's a label. It's a word that works. It is. It's a word that works. So yes. Um, in my case, in terms of all these things, because I, I was really interested actually to learn a few years back that asexuals do masturbate because I, I didn't even I hate that word what a horrible word Ugh, it feels funny kind of coming out of my mouth Ugh, uh, wank I prefer wank because <laughs> I I really at that point I hadn't learned much about asexuality as, as a like human label and I thought it was literally just no no sexual desire at all so to learn that asexuals can and do wank I was like oh that's that's more on my level because yes do have do have sexual thoughts, feelings, do have the occasional wank. Um, <laughs> very, very keen, very keen. Uh, this is too much information, but um, sex toys that require little to no effort on my part are, you know, if, if, if there were no vibrators, none of that stuff, I would never bother wanking. Like, uh, my, my kind of level of botheredness um very much depends on how easy it is like it, you know if, if everything was manual uh no I, I don't think i would ever 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 wank but you know these days we, we live in wonderful worlds where you you could you could just you know stick a thing on there and and, and sit down and and get it, and it happens and that, that's great I, I think that's awesome um so you know there there is some sexual desire there and I do think it's true actually what I remember hearing when I was a teenager that uh that like males reach their sexual peak when they're like 14 or some shit you know when they're constantly like wanking uh females reach their sexual peak round about the age of 40 and I actually think that's true because I swear I have more of a sex drive now than I've probably ever had in my life before um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> but yes, as far as finding other people attractive, that's the issue. Um, and at this point, because uh, when it comes to the, I don't even know how you say this, aromantic, aromantic? Um, I guess it's aromantic because it's asexual. But, um, you know, as far as not having any kind of romantic feelings for people, that, I'd say I'm kind of on that spectrum too. Um... But I never really know whether it's just like an Asperger's thing. I mean, I do I do know Asperger's people who are very slushy and emotional, actually, and very attached to their partners and things. So maybe it's not an like an Asperger's thing. Um, but yes, I'm very emotionally independent. I don't really need other people. Um, for much of anything. I mean, I really learned that actually when my dog died. I'd always thought like, you know, my dog, I'd had him for fucking, I don't know, 15 years or something. 15 years with the dog. He was like my best friend. He was like my best friend. I loved him very much, you know, and all the time I thought, oh my God, he's going to die one day, you know, and he was very old when he died. So for years I've been thinking, he's going to die gonna die and I don't know what I'm gonna do when he dies it's gonna be the end of the world and if I have to have him put down I'm I don't even oh my god I'm just gonna be a mess and that was exactly what happened um and actually like yeah I was sad obviously I was sad um I was really sad for about two days uh yeah that sounds awful but like, I still miss him I'd still love to have him back but it's not, you know, other people with their pets, you know, even like years later, they seem to be really bugged about it. And me, I'm just like, you know, I, I see it very logically. It's like, well, he lived a very long life and it was the right time to go. And we had a lovely time together and I have so many good memories. And like, what, what is there to get bugged about? And also it's really convenient not having to get up in the morning and give anyone breakfast. Um, I don't feel guilty if I'm on the computer all day and I'm not like out there giving him attention and everything. So it's, that's kind of how I feel. You know, everything just clicks back into place. When something's gone, it's just, oh, they're gone. Um, I think that's it's almost like it sounds a bit sociopathic, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but I have very little emotional need for people, which means I have very little motivation to pursue dating type stuff anyway. Um, 
because honestly it's it's just such a drain on your fucking time and I can't be doing with people wanting so much time like there was there was a, uh, like a meme that a friend posted um a while back saying something like if someone you're dating can go a week or like a few days or something without speaking to you you need to find someone else to date and I replied saying like if I was dating someone who couldn't go a few days without speaking to me game over um like yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean I've I've even refused to give out my phone number to people like you know like friends I've refused to give out my phone number to them if they're always up in my Facebook messages because it's like bitch if I you know you're always up in my Facebook messages if I give you my phone number too you're gonna be all all up in my nonsense all the fucking time I can't be doing with it you know um I, there, there are so few people that even like personality wise even take sex out of the equation there are so few people I even want as friends that I see regularly now that uh, yes, okay, fine. I, uh, is grey a romantic a thing? Because I guess we have that here. Well, I think we've just diagnosed that here and now. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, I've, I've basically reached the conclusion at this point in my life that um, finding somebody who I'm ever gonna really want to spend my life with, or even even a few years with, is very unlikely because it, you know the t the tiny proportion of people I'm attracted to, and the tiny proportion of people I actually like are both so tiny that to find both of these things in the same specimen would be like lottery winning statistics. I think um, you know I mean I have had long term relationships. I've had like three three long term relationships. Um, but all, all, well, four, I guess, because I got back together with one of them. Um, but that was all between the ages of, like, 16 and about 24. Um, and I think at that age, I was more open to stuff. I, you know, initially, you're just like, well, you know, it's totally cool. It's totally uncool to be, like, a virgin. So you, you want to chuck that away. And when, you know, when you've been, like, a bullied, lonely teenager, and when, the, you know, this was when the internet was only just in its infancy when I was a teenager, so it was like, there was nothing to do, you were bored all the time, so of course you wanted to, to hang out with people, so I was more, more open to giving people a chance. Then the next two relationships, um, I was doing a lot of stimulants and going out clubbing all the time, and doing stimulants, I had way more desire to interact with people, um, you know, on like speed and ecstasy and things. Oh yeah, I've got all the time in the world for people, great fun to talk to, they're like trip toys, you know? <laughs> God, I'm a sociopath. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I've, I've found that I've just got more and more fussy about everything as I've gotten older. Also, there's there's the rather awkward fact that when it comes to sexual desire and the people I'm attracted to, uh, my type has not aged with me because my type is pretty skinny kind of androgynous boys who are you know not not much taller than me ideally I don't mind if they're a bit tall but but ideally uh, ideally about my height which is five six so about five six to five nine skinny pretty androgynous boys now you are rolling in those when you're like late teens to early 20s when you're 34 good fucking luck good fucking luck even even finding anyone who's skinny enough for me to find them attractive um let alone like has hair fairly androgynous fairly pretty doesn't 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 exist you know in in the age range I'm in now, really. Um, so yes, he is basically, basically destined for eternal singleness. However, I'm, I'm not one of those people who's so completely like has no sexual or romantic desire that they're just like, well, that's fine. Uh, the thing is, I would still like to find this impossible person who doesn't exist. Um, it, it would still be lovely. It would still be, you know, if you ask me like, oh, what's what's your absolute ideal future? There, there would be a person. Um, but I'm pretty sure there never will be. So, uh, so that's, that's grey sexuality. And I have talked for a long time at this point. Um, I was, I was going to, I had, I had a whole, whole bunch of other stuff I wanted to say, but that's, that's like opening another can of worms. And therefore this video will be long beyond all 
all tolerance so uh so i'll leave that for now but um but yes at least i have this word now because actually oh fuck it okay fine it's, it's time to get naked it's, it's getting warm it's getting warm in here but i do like this jacket i do i do like this jacket i do like this jacket but uh, anyway nakedness right nakedness yes <laughs> the the funny thing is that plan b for tonight um the other thing i was going to do was start an online dating profile um i've had one before i had one for years actually uh, because of the fact that I never see anyone I'm interested in, you know, online dating for me, it's not like, oh, you start up and we're, you know, within a week, you, you, you've got five dates organised. I mean, I, at least, I suppose at least I do live in a good era for this kind of thing, because there is online dating, you know, so you can completely, without any rudeness whatsoever, <laughs> just scour, you know, hundreds and thousands of faces and go, no, 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 you know, for weeks on end without, without having to insult people because oh oh I, i'm pretty sure i've told you this story before but there, there was there was one guy um who I had a very brief thing with and decided i never wanted to do that again uh so anyway you know in a pub i was i was trying to say i you know i i did, did all the things you do and i said i think i'd rather just be friends um to which he replied, and this is the most passive aggressive thing I think anyone has ever said to me. Um, what? You're saying you think I'm unfuckable? I was like, wow, way to back me in a corner. I mean, what, what do you think you're going to get? You know, I've just said, I just want to be friends. Hence and therefore, I don't want to shag you again. What do you want me to say to do you think I'm unfuckable? I mean, obviously, like, I fucked you once, so no, but <laughs> I don't want to go back there again. <laughs> so, you know, at that point, I was like, eh, pretty much asexual, don't really fancy anyone else. But, um, I mean, God, yeah, obviously, if you have shagged them once and then you don't want to do it again. Uh, but, you know, so this is the thing. Online dating, you can avoid all the, all these all these all these kind of awfulnesses. You know, and you can see people's personality a bit too. So that's quite good. Although, you know, and I I think this is some. I don't think this is like a grey sexual thing. I think this is like an everyone thing. But you know, even if you've been talking to someone on online dating for a while, you've seen their pictures. Like they're super hot in like every picture, and you've spoken for ages, and you really feel like you connect and everything's good. You can still meet them and their vibe is just so different that you're just you're immediately not there um because i did i did go for a date with one guy and uh, admittedly we'd not like super bonded over messages I'd, I'd kind of got the feeling like i feel like we're talking but i don't feel like i'm getting anything from him and when we met like literally he spoke one sentence and just his vibe was just just no it wasn't there and you you can't you can't get like vibe over online dating. I mean, obviously, obviously people can with me, you know, because if they like reverse image search me at all or anything, then they find all of this crap. And uh, you know, and that that's that's quite awkward because um, because you know, because if if someone does know you on here, this is this is turning into a whole tangential waffle. But if 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 someone has seen all of this. What, what can I possibly talk to them about? Like, how do we have a conversation when they know, like, all my stories and I know none of their stories? So, um, so that's, that's kind of weird. But, um, to be honest, like, online dating, anyone I've ever, like, connected with and things before when I was on there, I don't think any of them, almost, almost none of them were goths. That's the interesting thing, actually, about online dating is that it, thank God, widens you beyond the goth scene because these days the goth scene is dead. If, if you're determined to date another goth, you know, in a re really hot, find yourself, a, you know, a tall, long, flowing hair, Pete Steele of a goth to, uh, to, to, to take a couple goals pictures with, well, I'm sorry, but you are fucking out of luck, you know, unless you're willing to, uh, to like, go to Treffen to, uh, to, to, to bag one and just, just you know, kidnap it bring it home <laughs> with you dating on the goth scene is dead um and uh 
you know, and even even back in the early 2000s when it was buzzing, like it was incestuous as hell. Um, everyone had bonked everyone before, like everyone, you know, anytime you went out, you had like at least four exes in the room because, you know, everyone is like this small scene. Everyone's just bonking everyone. And um, so dating outside of the goth scene is a good thing with, with OKC, but that also means probably that they don't know me on here and um and that we could actually we could actually get to know each other like like actual human beings on some kind of balanced level but yeah they can stalk me track me down at least find out my vibe and if they decide that i'm just generally too bizarre for them uh too too, too waffly and talkative and, and tedious and and uh, d disjointed and easily distracted squirrel um then <laughs> then then they can they can abandon abandon ship before we ever have to meet and uh and i have to completely embarrass myself oh the, the worst this is long I, I know i should shut up but the <laughs> the worst uh online dating thing i ever had was um this skype call with this one guy oh god this guy was gorgeous i mean you know i'd only seen his pictures and they were kind of grainy pictures but seriously that i mean you know grainy grainy can fuck off this guy was he looked like like robert pattinson meets james dean meets some kind of like freaking angel he was gorgeous uh we got on this skype call and i'm a bit shit with telephones any anyway and what happened was the image froze so his image froze but he could see me and so i was like in this goldfish bowl and his accent when he talked was the poshest thing i have ever heard in my life i mean you know when i first started on here i got so many questions about are you putting that voice on it's like your real voice like what is your background you sound posher than anyone i've ever heard in my life no this guy was like very very well spoken yes yeah very well spoken very very posh indeed um and so you know this is like major intimidation and uh and i'm frozen I, you know he's frozen i'm in this goldfish bowl and he's like super posh and he turns out he's he's doing like nuclear physics at university or something you know he's really really clever or i start rambling on about how cool stars are like, oh i love stars you can see them they're in the sky oh and you think about how far away they are and isn't it cool like the universe is fucking huge and i feel like such a tiny thing as stars wow they're far away do you do you know how far away they're you know i'm just just literally babbling this fucking shit because i can't see them it's like being on a phone i'm crap with phones and uh in the end it all went dead i think he hung up on me and uh that was the end of that. I, I didn't even message him. I didn't even just message him to be like, sorry about that. I was just like, this guy's terrifying. And anyway, he's, he's far away. And I, I don't, I don't think I'm getting a second chance at that. So, uh, <sighs> but anyway, I mean, if you can't deal with me at my, at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. No. Um, <laughs> if you can't deal with me spazzing out about stars, on the phone for five minutes um <laughs> then fuck you <laughs> so anyway yes i'm gonna i'm gonna throw myself back into that arena of embarrassment and and tedium pretty soon at a but having a word now gray sexuality having a word to explain why i'm probably not going to fancy any of them is quite useful but anyway if if you also if you also feel this is your label to some extent tell me things i'm actually really interested by the people who are like who have sex but are aromantic so like no no desire for like relationships or like cuddles or love or anything just just the sex um do we have any do we have any of those guys in the room because i'm very intrigued by those guys like are they really shitty to the people they sleep with? Because, you know, the, do they have, like, at least empathy for the other persons? Do they, you know, do they set out from the beginning, like, literally, I'm I'm just, like, DTF, you know, and, and after that, I have no interest in anything else? Or are they, like, constantly, you know, on, on, the, on the dating apps? Like, the, well, the shagging apps, really, you know, like, having quick hookups? Because it's, it's... Or do, do they just not bother? Because people are too much of an effort and they'd rather have a vibrator like I'm, those are the people who really interest me but um but yes actually and i would love to hear from anyone who is similar to me 
picky on both fronts, personality and looks, but has actually found someone who is a tolerable human being, because uh, I have a whole story about that too, but that's depressing and I'm not telling that on a Friday night, so uh, I guess I guess I'll be back with that one. But I've talked for a very long time and oh my hair feels so nice and clean. So nice and clean. Oh my god, dude, I've got a new phone and I can do slow motion. I can do all this shit. Slow motion. Ah, oh, Timothy Adver. I've just been doing it and watching it for hours. I'm the biggest narcissist on the planet. Um <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to shut up now, so tell me things, but yes, I think, I do think, God, sorry, there's hairs all over everything, looks disgusting, um, <laughs> I do think the actual asexual label should be left for the people who don't shag other people at all, I do think most of us statistically are likely to be grey sexual, and you know, maybe we need more splits in this, this kind of dark rainbow, um, you know the the people the people who wank the people who don't wank the people who have different definitions because one of my friends who who does identify as sort of in this spectrum uh she said it was it was because she's never felt any um like like real need for sex like she's wanted sex but never felt any real need for I don't think I understand the distinction personally but I guess that's like a category so I, I think it needs splitting more than than just a, a big lump of people who for like a whole bunch of different reasons don't don't you know think they're somewhat lacking in various shades of desire I, I do think it needs defining better but gray sexuality there's a word for it hey, hey. but uh, I, yeah I, I still I still don't understand being like proud about it I, I would I wouldn't call myself like a proud gray sexual is it, to me it's, it's just a very shitty inconvenient trait to be honest like because I dude I, as a final thought here I'm gonna shut up as a final thought I wish I lived in the world that everyone else lives in where every time they go to a club there's like wow this person's so freaking hot like or you know or there's always someone they're pursuing I have never really had anyone that I've been obsessed with pursuing, like, ever. And, like, imagine having that goal, imagine having that drama and that excitement in your life and, you know, turning on TV shows and, you know, having to, like, pause them in the middle to go and, like, have a wank or whatever you guys do, I don't know. But uh, the excitement of, of seeing people, the, the, the way that people get flustered with other people as well, like, oh, my God, they're so gorgeous, I don't even know how to talk to them. I can't, can't relate, <laughs> you know, can't relate. It's like, there's always something that I see or hear or feel about everyone that's so flawed that it that I you know I know it's over with someone when my inner monologue gets bitchy um pretty soon in relationships I tend to find that my inner monologue is like oh, gotta go see this fucker again I bet they're gonna get really drunk again and start bitching about stuff and god I really hate the way I smell like their armpits in the morning they sweat so much in the night it's disgusting and oh my god they're so annoying when they're drunk you know I, my, my inner monologue gets really bitchy and I'm like this is clearly over um and yes, there was only one person I ever knew who my inner monologue never got bitchy about. But that is the depressing story for another time. And at this point, I'm going to shut up because this really is very long. But uh, anyway, have you finished your snacks? Were they nice? Hope they were nice snacks. See you in America. You've got lovely snacks over there. Fucking pizza balls. Or what, what are those pizza ball things put in the oven? It's like a ball of pizza. Or the, like the microwave, like a ball of pizza. Shit. What an amazing place to live. Anyway, I'm going away now. <laughs> I can just hear my mum going to bed up the hall. Uh, so she, she's probably hearing me stonedly waffling away about bollocks. But uh, there we go. Shit happens. Anyway, going away now. Night, night. <laughs>